Okay, take two. So welcome to Sparkling Harmonies. We're your hosts, Lily. And Francois. And we are two friends who don't quite listen to the same type of music, but who are here to talk to you about everything and anything music related. So how's it going today, Francois? Oh, really good. It's a uh bit different since uh it's our third recording session but yeah. the first real episode mm -hmm. so i don't know I'm, i'm like not stressful but it's it's, ex it's, it's exciting it's exciting because now at this time rather than talk about our own personal weeks well we're, we will talk about our own personal experiences but we're also going to be talking about an actual subject that's uh yeah. that we read about too so it's going to be a little bit so. different So, because what are we talking about today? Uh, we'll talk about not something new, but something that is way more present now since it's yeah. COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, mm. All the streaming shows, the live, yeah. well, I will have live because I think it's an important part of the discussion, but the live streaming shows that's happening right now in music. Yeah. So we're talking about not only the live ones, though, we're also talking about what type of streaming the bands have yeah. been putting up online since the beginning. So if we go back to when the world basically shut down in the spring, um, you know, we nobody knew how long this would last. So we're, right now we're in October. Um, everything is starting to close up again worldwide. Um, <laughs> yeah. Second wave. And so during the spring, a lot of bands, a lot of artists were kind of streaming on Instagram. Yes, yes. And on Facebook. So these were all for free. And it was all just kind of like acoustic. And it would be just probably be one member because back then nobody was allowed to see anybody. Um, and it at least it offered this kind of uh, link to the artists back then. Did yes, you and probably a bit of um, a relief to people yeah. because like we know we all are all in the same situation uh, we have to stay strong and like you said nobody know how long it was supposed yeah. to last so it, it was like be strong and it, it's gonna be okay like everyone's back then i don't know if it's still a thing but everything gonna be fine yeah so and i don't know if in your universe uh that was a thing but uh especially in punk stuff there's a lot of artists that not try to lecture people but give them a little bit of a positive uh way to see like their lockdown right. uh, protect yourself yeah. protect your friend uh, uh it's not fun to do so because no more shows no more gathering no more anything but we're doing it to help people yeah, so absolutely i think a lot of a lot of people a lot of the public figures were felt like they had to give that message of hope to people yes. um that they had to also just also tell people to do the right thing i think there was some at some point um i think governments were trying to tell known artists to tell people to yeah, yeah. you know do the right thing stay home you know because That's how we're going to get out of this. And um, so there was a lot of those definitely in my musical world as well. Yeah, yeah. That was the thing. I, I even saw many, many, many like polarization. Yeah. About that, especially between the fans, because uh, for the Get back to the yeah. music. <laughs> yeah. So going going back to uh, the live streams, you know, there was a lot of those people who did that um, those streams on Instagram and everything. Um, but then after that, I think a lot of artists started to kind of repost their live concerts. I know um, BTS did a series, I think, with YouTube Premium, where they were streaming some of their past shows. Um, I think uh, there was uh, a lot of bands that did that. So 
were there any in particular in in uh, your world that did that but there there's the metallica metallica monday they're yeah. doing like every monday a new show and i know that the uh, not fest the music festival from slipknot mm -hmm. they're start to doing it but i i didn't follow it too much i know that napalm record did it too they call it right. the sofa series <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. there's many many band but on my side of the spec musical spectrum right uh, it's a it's, it's more like the big band because they have a big catalog and they know they can do it for a really long time right so they can keep the attention without doing too much stuff Right, without without having to actually record or re that without yeah, this is this is all things that were already recorded. It, it was basically, I guess, all of these shows were recorded in the past for potentially becoming a DVD. Yeah, or, and then or did something it. similar. Yeah, yeah, and so I mean, it's nice for fans, and you know, to get to relive that, but it's not quite the same as the bands that you know actually live stream now. Because as, yeah, as the quarantine progressed, there was different levels of that. So at the beginning, it was a lot of Instagram and then a lot of those reposts. And even now there are still reposts, but then people started to actually do more professional, if you would say, live streams. So rather yeah, than just turning on their too. phone. Yeah. So one of the bands that I listened to, um, State Champs, they did one in June. So back then, the, the four guys were still all at home. So they, they, uh, they did a show where it was $10 USD to assist. And when it was that night, you, you had basically the four guys who were live streaming um, and chatting. Okay. And then throughout the show, they had recorded songs, each on their own, and that they put together. Um, so they had these acoustic songs that were put out through, uh, throughout the night too. So it was oh, part, nice. partly live, partly pre-recorded, um, partly interactive because they were reading the chat all night and responding to people. Um, and so that was a very cool experience I found. And then after that, you had 24 hours if you wanted to rewatch it. I think it was 24 hours. Yeah. Like, like, like a show, if you miss it, the show is is yeah. done so you can go back so it, that makes sense yeah but that i think the interactivity part is nice because normally well, it depend on the band and the venues but normally you don't have access to the bands or at least yeah. for that much time exactly mostly during like when the come uh, on when they what yeah when they when they need to get out when they need yeah. to empty out the venue so sometimes it's during two sets or like they are they, they don't have a lot of time right. to give you but during the lockdown they are locked in their home so they have mm -hmm. more more time i guess yeah but that i think that's cool because you you can read the like, the comments the and the chat yeah the comment yeah but the, the reaction oh, like, oh right. the, i love that song or yeah. I, I remember i saw you guys at that place and think it's it's more of a you, you more, share something yeah absolutely it's, it's a lot more interactive which is nice so it's it's not the same as a concert it's not the same feeling it's not the same vibe but it's different and it's not different in a bad way yeah yeah it, just just another thing to do exactly um and then going from there they actually so yesterday night so we are mid-october and yesterday night they did another live stream but this time they were on twitch um, okay. so it was, uh, free to watch. Everybody could watch it. Um, rather than do songs though, they were just going through, um, their old video clips and talking and stuff like that. So I, I like also react feel videos? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, they were. Okay. So they, they, they went back through their old videos because they were celebrating, um, one of their albums. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like that's also something that a lot of artists did. So a lot of artists in the, the music that I listen to, they, they've started Twitch. You yeah, know, so State it, Champs did, All Time Low did, uh, Mark Hoppus from uh, Blink-182 Blink. has a has a Twitch, and they just do anything on there now. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be music. A lot of them play games, um, and I guess it's just another way for them to interact with fans since they can't be on tour. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to set up, so yeah, maybe if they're, they're not tech-savvy, they can just plug, play, and enjoy, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 
And so what about some of your uh, live stream experiences at the towards the beginning of uh Yeah, uh but okay, for me there there was one show that mm -hmm. I really enjoy and there's a part of me enjoyed the the drama around it too. Okay. Maybe. It's the Post Malone tribute to Nirvana. Oh, okay, right. Because yeah. I think maybe I don't I don't remember timeline, but I think he, he announced it like a week before or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't hear a note and people were already talking shit about him because right. he's not he's not a real musician, he don't have the real voice, he don't know blah blah blah, whatever. I'm pretty sure everyone can figure out with what kind of comments he got. Mm -hmm. And the guy just nailed it. Yeah. It was a really, really good show. Okay, yeah, that that wasn't Kurt Cobain. And I'm not I'm pretty sure he didn't want to be Kurt Cobain. No. He just wanted to have fun. And right. I think his love for the band was genuine because he was I don't know if he can, I, I can find the video the 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 the, the, the time in the video, but at one time uh, there was um, what her name Cor uh, Courtney Love, right? The ex-wife yeah. of Kurt Cobain or the wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the widow, she, the widow. Yeah, the widow. Uh, sorry, and she comments on the stream to say, "Oh, I really like that." And I think at the end of the show there was the Christoph Oslik, the basis, the Nirvana mm -hmm. basis. He gave like a really huge amount of money and he congrats the guy because he really enjoyed the show mm -hmm. and he was really happy to see uh i don't know why i re i never remember names <laughs> trey barker at the drum on the drum set oh okay well i didn't know that so i didn't i personally didn't watch this okay so um that's why i don't really know about it but so was this one a uh, free to watch and you could yes, donate if was, you wanted uh, Yes, and that was for the, sorry, because I have to translate it. It's uh, the WHO, uh, World Health Organization. World Health Organization. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the, the emergency he found in right. relief. So that was cool. That was, that was, first of all, a cool gesture to do. Certainly Absolutely. A really good show. Yeah. And like I said in the previous, but I don't know if people will have heard it before, but uh, I talk about uh, Machine Gun Kelly. And right. The, the the potential of reviving the pop the punk, punk scene. scene and i think i think i can see post malone doing that too right because he, he, he sure can play the guitar he's not mm -hmm. a shredder but he enjoy it yeah and he use it and he shows some stuff to new audience so that's mm -hmm. nice yeah because then maybe some people who listen to his type of music were watching because they wanted to see him Mm -hmm. And then they discovered maybe this music that they weren't really into, but that they might want to dive into now. Yeah, so that that was a really good experience, and it was really um, really into like chatting with people and mm -hmm. respond to the commentaries. And I I don't know the where they were. I'm pretty sure that was his own home. Right. Every member were in the different rooms. Oh. He was at the bar, and between each song, he's like. Anyone want to drink a beer? Uh, something? <laughs> oh, that That's was funny. funny. That was yeah. a, seriously that was a really good show. And so, what what do you think? So you know that show was free. One of the shows I watched was um, the the show that I watched for, that I mentioned so far was ten dollars. And the, then the more we advanced in the quarantine period, more shows were. Uh, getting bigger and more production value so more of the shows were getting more expensive I, I think i saw in this article a lot of the shows were around 20 to 30 us dollars um i personally saw two other ones that were between 10 and 15 that i'll talk about a little bit later but then now there are also the ones that are 50 or 60 dollars um yeah so how do you think you put a value on something like this because it's not the same as seeing a show in person yeah, but what the difference for the, the musician? They have to produce. They have to be there. They have to give it, to give the show. Absolutely. Uh, there's, to me, I think there's other technical potential issues. So right. I know. I know it's not the same social experience. Mm -hmm. But as art is really subjective. Yeah. But I think I think it's probably the same. Probably, yeah, because that's true. You do need your whole 
uh, tech team, your whole crew to help you out. Yeah. So the, the next show that I'm going to talk about was the main, they did a show, um, towards the end of summer, a little bit, the, I think the week before Labor Day weekend, um, they did a show where they had rented this, uh, theater. So they rented out okay. the Orpheum theater in Arizona. And this was personally my first show that was live. Okay. And, um, in this scale and that was in an actual venue um, and theirs was $10 for this show as well um, and it was free if you were part of their um, pillar fan club so I found that very cool and this experience was completely different from the state champs one so I loved the state champs one um, but this one was just very different from it so I, I don't even think I can compare both because the main show is more like a, an actual concert. Yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the main have a longer story of doing that kind of stuff. True. So they, uh, what do you mean a longer story of doing that kind of stuff though? By with their fan platform and. That's true. So yeah, they, I get they, I get what you mean. So they they have had their their platform out for uh, well, it wasn't that long. They, it was been it's been a few months. Um, I think they it, it it was towards the beginning of the year that they opened up this platform okay. of theirs. Um, and but so when they did this show, it was really because they they just really wanted to give something back to their fans and have them you know kind of uh, excited for something because at some point when when you're quarantined it's hard to be excited for anything because you just don't know yeah. when everything is going to come back um but when they did the show what was nice was they had uh, they picked fans to be on zoom on a oh, screen nice. in front of the stage uh so they had this little uh this little extra interaction with people where they saw their faces and everything of course they couldn't hear them um but that was nice and so they did their full set in that venue with multiple cameras. The quality was really good. Um, they did a pre-show before it, and then they did a, a DJ set after that was pre-recorded. And then yeah. after that, they did a, a live Q&A where they answered questions from the chat or from um, Twitter. So Yeah, but that, that's what I, why I said uh, they have a bigger story because... To me, I'm not a fan of the main. I mm -hmm. know the main because of you. Yeah. But what I can see, they are like marketing genius and probably like, I don't know if I can call that marketing, but fan relationship genius. Yeah, absolutely. Because they they do many, 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 many things. They, they seem to, to try new stuff too. Maybe yeah. that work doesn't work. I don't know, but they, they have that interest. Yeah. I think they are very close to their fans. They're one of the bands that I definitely find are the closest to their fans and want their fans input and want, you know, they, they're always interested in, in interacting with their fans, definitely. So back when they were on MySpace, they were constantly responding to everybody. Um, and then, you know, they're the ones who always advocate for free meet and greets. Um, are, are they uh, independent? They are, yeah. They weren't for a while, um, but then they now they are. They are. That, so they're under their thing. own music label. Yeah, but that's another thing. They they have the the production tools, they have the production power. So and the experience that's coming with it because you right. have it, you use it, you use it, you learn to do new yeah. stuff and on and on and on. Yeah. So that's nice. They they know now they can push something different and probably bigger than ever with that. Yeah. That's true. And I think so for me the the this show was was something it was it was special and and um it was definitely a very fun experience and what did, about did you the, talk with them uh so no so i had a very bad internet w uh. that night um so i was kind of watching it and it was it kept freezing and i kept getting annoyed um but uh so i was just happy to be there and just be watching yeah in bad quality but still watching <laughs> but still there I had to put it at the the lowest quality because otherwise it, it wouldn't load. Uh, yeah. And so what about some of your other shows? But I look at uh, a band called Cadavar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 
it's like a revival 70s rock band i guess yeah uh, they are from germany they try something and i think they that wasn't like like uh, the show you speak before like big production anything they were in the studio every guy had a camera in front of it mm -hmm. uh, of him and they were playing but what was nice it's i i'm not sure if they have an album or the start of a uh tourney a tour a tour so that was like oh, okay we can't do what we were supposed to do so we try something else right so that's nice to see they were able to use the a negative thing to transform it to something positive yeah and since their universe musically and visually it's really about the 70s like the guy had the mustache and long curly hair and <laughs> you have a i don't know if i can translate that uh the pantalon pad d'elephant <laughs> uh so bell bottoms pants bell bottom so yeah. that was funny to see like the whole timer playing the new tech guy that's that's funny like the contrast was funny mm -hmm. but what i ate Yeah, unquote. what you hated from that? Hate, but that, yeah, that wasn't really like a real show. That was right. more like a, like a little solution in between because yeah. to, to me, that's kind of a, I don't know how to call that performance, I would say. Uh, it's more like, a, hey, look, guys, we're recording an album. Let's see like two or three songs to show you a teaser. Mm -hmm. That was more, that, that was more like that to me. But it, it's also you, If you are going to do it, if you're going to do a show, you also need to evaluate the risks. You need to evaluate, you know, is it worth renting out a place? Like, are you looking to make money? Are you looking to just give this to the fans in an easy way? Um, because, you know, it could cost a lot of money to rent out a venue, yes. hire all those people that are going to help you deal with all the cameras, all the sound. Um, and you know, you need to see if it's worth it for you. I, for example, watched another show where the guys, they were um, tested, they all tested, got tested, and then they all quarantined together to be able to do a show in a safe environment for fans. Oh, so this was nice. All Time Low. All Time Low, they recorded a show in July and they released it last, uh, well, there, it's actually being released throughout the month and next month. Yeah, it's five date, I think. Five, yeah, exactly. So the first show was their their album that came out during the first part of quarantine. Um, it's a really great album, by the way. Yeah, you, you listen to it. Yes, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, that that was my jam at the beginning of quarantine because it was it was at the same time as when um, the weather was starting to get nice. So I was just blasting that um, outside. So wake up sunshine <laughs> <laughs> in the yard. Um, and so they, they recorded this back in July and they're releasing it now. And so that, that was really cool of them because they, um, but they had, like I said, they had to get tested and they wanted to make sure everything was okay. Um, and when they, when they uh, released it, they even said that they had They were thinking of getting the some of their collab collaborators with them, but then they 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 said, you know, is it worth the risk for them for us? Yeah, and it's and, more complicated. Because yeah, more people, more problems. Exactly. Badly. <laughs> exactly. So um, that was also one that I found nice that uh, the way they did that. It's it was different from the live show of the main, but it was still nice to see this kind of live show. It was it was like watching a DVD, basically, yeah, okay. of, a, of a band. Yeah. Yeah, but at least they keep going on. So. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of band who just stop. Yeah. For, for good reason, but just stop, perform, uh, practice, uh, yeah. create maybe, and and I'm pretty sure there's the total opposite. There's been that are doing more now. <laughs> yeah. During quarantine. Yeah. And, um, then. So we've talked about the the kind of low budget um, film in the studio. We've talked about the ones where they just opened up their phone and live stream on Instagram. We've talked about ones where they rented out venues and actually recorded. So now I wanted to go into the ones that are 
big. So there was festivals now that are actually, you know, they, they have two areas where they're recording. Like I think um, last month there was the iHeart Radio Festival. Yep. Uh, where they 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 had these big performances and it was it was exactly like watching an award show basically. And I, I think that I, was the point. They, they yeah. want to do. They want to give something bigger. Yeah. To people. And what was nice with that, I think, was um, if you if you were in the states, you could just go onto this website and you you could watch it for free. I don't know how easy it was in Canada. I, I personally didn't watch it, um, but I think for the United States, you had to just go on the CW and. You could watch it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. But but on the other side, probably they were they were like sponsors or something like that. Probably, probably. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why it's free in the United States. Yeah, because uh, there were some uh, pretty big names in there. I think. Oh, that's cool. That yeah. that's something different. Is is it the the same show they're trying to raise money for the music venues? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. Because I saw, uh, I think it's Dave Grohl share something about that. They want mm -hmm. to do like a online festival to help like all the small venues that right. probably won't survive or at I least know. lost many, many, many money. Yeah. During that time. No, this is a this is a very difficult period for small venues because they're just stuck. You know. Yeah, and and they don't have like the resources to exactly to push further the experience yeah and the you know I, governments are trying to give money to businesses but it's very limited so yeah let's just hope that they don't all die out when we when we get out of this because I uh, hope not. but it's going to be that, even harder that's interesting because like the big venues they have like most of the time another company around like the sound bill right. center is not alone on in set on itself yeah. it's it's a, i think it's group Gillette, if i'm not mistaken uh, and yeah. the haves and stuff like that so they can move people and money around other companies or part right. of the companies but smaller venues they most of the time is like a family yeah they are like five six mostly ten people working hard to yeah, make it survive so absolutely. It's different. And I think a lot of them, a lot of the smaller ones, they they don't even really make a profit. Yeah, you know, they just <laughs> they just they just break even. So there's no even now. <laughs> no, yeah. But then going back to the bigger shows, um, I this week I decided to watch um, One OK Rock. Yeah, your they, Japanese band. Yeah, they did a very big show. So. Um, I wasn't sure if I was ready to pay $50 for an online experience. Um, but I'm glad I did. So what they did, they, they've really hyped it up though. They, they've been posting previews of it for the past weeks. Um, okay. and then that was now, live? this was live. Yeah. So this okay, was okay. Uh, last weekend. They, they did this live. They ran, they had a stadium. They like were an at actual a, baseball stadium. Yeah. Or? Yeah, an actual state. It was huge. Um, so when I was watching it, I honestly I felt like I was watching um, halftime of the Super Bowl. Oh, nice. Yeah, but and in the, Japanese. <laughs> yeah, but uh, because the production value was insane. So since there was no crowd, they had put lights all over the field. Okay. Um, and that they were synchronizing sometimes with the songs. Um, oh, that's nice. And they had lights all around in the in the in the seats as well, and um, there there were I I I can't even guess how many cameras there were, because there were some that were following this the lead singer Taka, and then sometimes he would be like looking straight at a camera, and you would see it from the side, and then you get the the view from the the front camera, and despite it being with no audience, I found the band to be very engaging. Okay. So more, more than just watching like a, a recorded uh, shows on a yes. DVD, for example. Yes, okay. because with a recorded show, yes, you'll see them engage, but you'll see them engage mostly with the the audience, right? So yes. here they were directly engaging with the cameras. Oh yeah, they did. They, they shift the perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they you, were singing for you. Yes, and they had me yelling in my in my in my um, living room. That's how oh, yeah. that's how much I got into it. 
Oh, nice. That's and, cool. Yeah. So it was, it was a really great experience. And they also, so they, they did this really cool intro and then they had the concert and then they had an interview part where they, they each talked a bit, a little, a little bit about the full experience and how, how they were planning it. And then they, they had another part of the show and at the end there were fireworks. 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 Nice. So, so in, ret in retrospective, do you think it's worth the 50 bucks? I think you so. You put into it? I think so. Um, because I know that was probably not even the cost of the, of, for them of making it. Although I think because it's worldwide, the, the advantage of this is you can sell more tickets than you usually would. Yeah, probably because there's only one show. So exactly. maybe you can try to push yeah. it harder. But I mean, they had the amount of people that they had to have for this to work is probably even more than what I can imagine. Yeah, but because probably there was like all their team, like technicians and stuff, and probably all the team around the stadium. Stadium, yeah. So yeah. people who knows where all the outlets are, are the light stuff, and probably yeah. all the small. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the halls like every passage that I yeah. are hiding behind to help people to go from point a to point b yeah and yeah and what was what what i found cool also is um they really used all the space and they used it they they maximized what they could use like i said so they put lights all over the floor but their stage also i think was like a screen the stage oh, nice. they were on. So it kept changing. Sometimes we had an overhead view. And so you saw the stage change colors and there was like words sometimes that would pop up on the stage. And so that also gives you a different perspective because usually if you're at a concert, yes, sometimes you'll get zoom ins if you look at the big screens. But other than that, you're seeing the artist in tiny, tiny little, <laughs> little artists yeah. all the way, you know, very far from you. So that was also very nice because you got close ups of everybody. You know, yeah, and that's nice because they they rent that big stadium, so they use it as a whole. Yeah, yeah, not and just even the trip, no, not exactly. just the front, like you see, like you said, you, it's not just the stage; it's the whole building. Yeah, yeah, because I think they had two stages. Because at some point, Taka, I think he was running from one stage to the other, um, and then they also did an acoustic stage where they went and were sitting in the stands. Okay. And they did an acoustic uh, song in there, and uh, yeah. So, no, it was a it was a very fun experience. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But I can probably use that to to bridge to my other part of the discussion about what what's happening now mm -hmm. because having a whole shows it's a thing. Right. Try to do something with your cell phone. It's another thing. Mm -hmm. Try to do like a, a mix, like you said, a, me a meet and greet and Q and A and yeah. part of shows and stuff. But producing a whole show, like literally, like the big thing, like you will do in real life. Yeah, that, that's something different. It and is. I think there will be more, even after the lockdown. Yeah, I think so too because um, it 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 allows people from all over to see your show. Because you know, when when a band tours, you can't really go all over, right? No, no, that's impossible. And every every time there's a tour, there are always people complaining. Oh, why aren't you coming to my city? Why are you skipping this city? And so, having maybe you know do the tour and then do one of the shows where you're going to be live streaming it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so nobody can, it, nobody will miss out. Yeah, that, maybe like it will replace the the DVDs or Blu-rays. Yeah, like Which, because normally they they try to capture the best performance mm -hmm. and put it on a DVD. Yeah, but maybe now you, they can do it live, like maybe. after I don't know two years of touring, doing like mm -hmm. one big show online for yeah. every people that miss it or who want to rewatch it. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's definitely going to be something that will stay. And just 
it's different watching it on a DVD versus watching it live. You know, even though it, yeah, with other it, people. Yeah, essentially, it is the same thing that you're watching. Yes, but, but done it, in the same way. Exactly, because you know that this is happening now, and I think that 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 also gives a, a different type of uh, excitement. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes you do like special stuff, like I don't know. Uh, I think Metallica did that a couple of years ago. When you bought the tickets for the show, you can ask like your top three song. And people oh. vote for the set list. Mm -hmm. But doing it live, maybe they can do the same thing. It, it's easier because you know in advance what will be the set list. How I'm pretty sure you can uh, form team and vote for your song against other songs. And yeah. Th th there's potential to do something with that. Absolutely. And there's also, so for uh, going back to the main show that I watched, when they re announced that it was going to be um they they were playing the uh, their full album and so it was like it, they, they always they they've been doing this a few times so when an album cycle ends they do okay. a farewell show for that album oh, nice. and so they kept reposting photos of fans who had you know really gone all out at home people had balloons people had um and stuff like that to 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 say goodbye to the show officially um to the album officially and so that, oh, that's nice that will also allow you, you know, we in Montreal, my friends and I always complain that a lot of the bands always skip us. Um, so either we always have to go to the States or we have to go to Toronto. Um, but if it was live, maybe we, we would just all, you know, come to my house and recreate kind of the show atmosphere and just watch it together on, on our TV. Yes. And all. that could be a... And probably you have some friend like I do that doesn't want to go to a venues to be mixed with all the crowd <laughs> and paying probably too much for a beer or something. Yeah. They, they will probably go to your place to look at a show. Yeah. So maybe you can like bring new people to the, the experience. Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's, you know, as much as I love going to shows, I know it's not everybody's, um, it's not, it's not, not everybody's like that. Um, because it's true. Some people just don't like to be surrounded sweaty. by sweaty people. <laughs> um, also, it's always also depending on where the show is. Sometimes, you know, that the sound quality won't be as good and you're going to be disappointed anyways. Yeah. So, um, so this is definitely something that could replace that, I think for, for those people. But um, going back to the bigger productions, I know I didn't watch this, but I know BTS last weekend at this, I think maybe a day before or at the same time as when OK Rock, they had their huge uh, online live streaming um, yes. concert. And that production value was looked like it was enormous. So I saw a few clips of it okay. and it, it looked insane. And yeah, they... But I I uh, continue, continue. I was just gonna say they they also had um, at some point. I know they had all some of their fans in the background on stage as like part of the decor, where they had okay. their fans that on their cameras, um, just all kind of projected onto the stage, and that was really nice. Because then you know, if you got to be part of that, you know, I I, I guess you would feel a sense of uh, I'm actually there. Yeah, really there. <laughs> yeah, but what were you gonna say? Yeah. I if I'm not mistaken, because you share me some articles about that show, mm -hmm. they, they try to push a platform. Yeah, so it, I think... I, I, I'm not saying it uh, in a bad way. In just they try to build something like right. to promote shows online in Korea with mm -hmm. that experience. Yeah, I think so. And I think... So I don't know exactly what they're planning or if they're like in collaboration with um, with a company, but uh, I am excited to see what that will bring because I don't think I don't think live shows are going to come back quite as soon as we would like them. No, to. sadly. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything else that uh, you wanted to add on this subject? But not on the big production show, but. Mm -hmm. I since you you watch 
way more so than me and you were more into it than me mm -hmm. i tried to explore the other part like why i didn't watch as much so yeah because I, that that's funny because i really enjoyed live show like mm -hmm. actual live show and i really enjoyed to listen to live show like recorded but i don't know i for, first of all my universe maybe is lacking the interest or I don't know, maybe the technology is frightening. I don't know. <laughs> because some metal band did it, but like the the top band, but the lower tier, they did. I didn't see much. I don't say right. there's no show, but I didn't see much. Mm -hmm. And there, there's, there's something missing for me to look at a live show like uh, on my couch. Right. Because like we said with some people that don't like to be in the crowd, it, to me, it's a big part of why I love that. I yeah. like to just lose myself in a crowd mm -hmm. and be part of something bigger and sing along. <laughs> well, I love sing along. Well, I, I said I was singing along in the living room. Um, I didn't think I would, but there I was yelling at the TV. Um, <laughs> But I think that's where we might differ a little bit is that I am the type of person at a show who will be in the back. I'm one oh, of those yeah? chill in the back, far away from people, far away from the mosh pit, potential mosh pits. Um, and so maybe that's why I don't mind watching it a little bit from afar. Even yeah, you like have a better view now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I feel like that's might be where we differ a little bit as well. Yeah, um, I, guilty as charged. I'm tall. I'm six foot two, but I'm mostly most of the time I'm on the first row or really close. You're the person I, I that everybody. It. You're the person that everybody wants to move. Yeah, no, because some most of the time I'm helpful too. Because normally I go with a friend of us, Chantal, mm -hmm. and as a girl, I I hate to say that, but people are stupid. And they just like fight for their life. Mm. And, like, come on, like, not just because, yeah, okay, we both know Chantal can protect herself. That's right. not the point. But you look around and there's like kids and people are punching them. Not, not in every show, but maybe that's where I realized I was an adult. I remember at Amonamach show, it's a Viking band. Like, mm -hmm. I was, that, that, not the most violent show but people were really into it and i remember chantal bring back a little kid like she was probably like 14 15 years old max mm -hmm. she was stone and probably drunk too and she, she was lost she was just like what's going on oh my and god we grab her and ask her like are you all right like do you need help do you need something yeah. and we were really like genuine we're, because she was she was she was looking like a little baby kitten lost in the forest. Oh my gosh! And she was like, "Oh yeah, I'm right," and she just jumped back in. But I I also understand because I was that kid like a couple of years ago. But mm -hmm. That was just like a, a moment of truth. Like, oh my god, I'm an adult now. I yeah. care for smaller people. Well, than it's me. it's like me when I am. Um, when I decide that I want to be out up front at warp tour or something like that. And then there's, there are all these people, um, crowd surfing. And I know a lot of people are like, Oh my God, I don't want a foot in my head again. And I'm just like, I hope this person gets to the front. Okay. And that they don't fall before, you know? <laughs> yeah. The deep end of the show, because sometimes they better fall off in the middle of the crowd. Because the guy at the at the gate in front would just smash him on the wall and, mm. and throw it at the at the end of the show. But yeah. no. And the other part of why I didn't watch that much show is because I bought like ten tickets before lockdown, mm -hmm. and mostly in the smaller venues. And many venues ask for uh, like a no uh, no refund. No refund. Uh, so they can keep the money and split it with the bands. Mm -hmm. And with, with my friend Chanta, we decided to like give them all the money because right. for eight dollars, I didn't lose my money. I don't mm -hmm. need that eight dollars, and they probably need it more than me. So right. we just 
said, okay, since we want to see other shows, <laughs> like in maybe two or three years, I don't yeah. know. So just just take my eight dollars and right. try so to the, survive on. This was basically your way of supporting the band and supporting the venue. Yeah, I try. I, I I'm not the I'm not the best one, but I I was like. I won't see the shows and that money was already gone. So yeah. keep it <laughs> yeah. and enjoy. And on the other side, like I don't see as much creativity during those shows, uh, uh, the online shows I saw, like you told me like the big production and interaction with, I, I didn't see that much on my side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Maybe I missed them and maybe I, it's more, um, conservative maybe because rock maybe. metal punk they have like a they, they're the gate keeping people like yeah. watching to be sure everything stay genuine and whatever but like i don't know if you ever listen to the key key exp shows or tiny desk show on youtube i've heard of it i've never watched them but i've heard of them yeah uh i'm not sure tiny desk i think it's pbs Mm -hmm. And key e x p that's hard to say <laughs> it's a radio station in seattle okay and that's what they did they invite band in their studios and they give them like 30 to 45 minutes to showcase what they do because probably the night coming or two or three day after they have a show in town mm -hmm. so i really like those setup because it's smaller it's not that long and since they can have like the whole drum set or like all the instruments or all the space they need yeah they, they try to do something else and different and funny and so i didn't saw that yet and I'm, I'm not right. saying that won't happen but i think that kind of like change is needed because you you can just be in front of the camera and play the guitar and look, no. at, look at your feet for like an hour and a half no. and expect people to pay i think yeah yeah maybe absolutely. i'm wrong but i that's why like for the all the concerts that i've paid for so far i i found that they were worth it just because it wasn't just somebody playing guitar or in front of the camera you know there was something else even though all time low there was no quite live interaction the show itself felt live. And I think the guys were um, telling people to tweet at them during the, oh, okay. the, the concert and they were retweeting and they were responding to some tweets at the same time. So there was that interaction um, part. And because, yeah, because absolutely, if, if it's just some guy that's going to be putting the camera in front of him and playing and there's just nothing else, then I personally don't think that would be worth it. Yeah, totally. Um, but maybe that would help to have a re to help uh, bands and artists to have a reflection. Yeah. Like because uh, contraint uh, restriction restrictions. Yeah. Bring creativity. Creativity. Yeah. So maybe that would there will be some new stuff, new new spice. Mm -hmm. That they they have to reinvent themselves somehow. Yeah. Because there's also the the possibility of becoming irrelevant throughout this all, you know. Because yeah, if, yeah. if you're not doing anything, if you're not releasing any new music, if you're not showing your face, then sadly, people with their attention short attention spans now might just move on. Yeah, they will find someone else. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, on my side, I'm glad that the bands that I, a lot of the bands that I listen to have been kind of doing stuff a little bit here and there. Um, some more than others, like the main, they have another show coming up because um, like uh, they they have a, an album called forever Halloween. So they're doing a Halloween ball. Uh, so you will disguise yourself and watch the show. I don't know, Pro but maybe not with the costume, but uh, I will be watching the show. Um, I'm going to be fighting with my boyfriend because he wants to watch horror movies, but I'll watch it. We'll put this on the TV. So we'll see who wins. Um, you can do half and half. I don't like horror movies, so I can't do horror And you movies. don't like the main, so... 
So that is, so we'll, we'll both, out at the middle. <laughs> so yeah, so we'll see. But I'm I'm very excited about this. That they they always go all out. So they'll they create uh, last time they created a drinks menu where you could create your own drinks with the names that had a that had a link to their album. And, oh, nice! And last week, uh, this week, they just asked fans to give them drink names ideas. So oh, nice! That's fun. Yeah. Oh. But that's cool because reading all those articles we share and think about it, that's make me realize I have maybe I have to dig more and try to find like bands I like I didn't think of that probably have a shows or something coming up. Yeah. So maybe I will have some uh, some new experience on the next show. <laughs> yeah, because one of the one of the articles that we that we went through, I think it was the Billboard one that listed a lot of the of the, a lot of the upcoming shows. I was genuinely surprised by the amount of shows that were coming up. Because I, you know, I follow what I like. I don't yeah. pay attention to everything else, but everybody else seems to be doing it as well. So that's cool. Yeah, and more people doing it. Yeah. More other band will join and try to do something too. Yeah. Or or maybe some venues will shift their their production and try maybe. to do online stuff. Maybe, yeah. Because on a more local scene in Quebec, uh Quebec City, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's a bit mixed up. Uh there's a place called Lanti. It's mm-hmm. a punk venue. Uh and they are linked to uh, uh hey boy. The point vault. I don't think they the have a, sell, seller, like um, yeah, it, it, it's a ticket selling. Line. Yeah, and they, they, I think it's the same company. I'm not sure, but I think it's the same company. They tried that. They did like, okay, we have the venue, we can sell the ticket. So if we make that together, we can just sell shows. Right. So yeah, I know a couple of people who try them, but that that's a, still in a working progress. Right. But. Maybe some more venue will try to do that. Maybe. I think they just don't have a choice. At some point, you know, they, they need to find a way to survive. Um, and that the way to survive is by doing shows somehow, right? Somehow, yeah, somehow. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only, the, the, the one issue I think I have with, um, I guess, the bigger production value shows that are kind of like DVDs is... You're, if you're paying for this, that's as a, amount about the the amount that a DVD would cost you. Part of me wished that I would have had more time to rewatch it as well. Oh uh, yeah. You know, because most of these things, you either have 24 hours or you might have a couple of days to rewatch it. Um, and I I don't know. I think since you paid for it, maybe you could just have it the video file after or have access to it for a longer period of time. Yeah, but sometimes it's for uh, the future. They're selling it so for like three days. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So you pay for it because you want to see it. And you yeah. know you will miss it if, you, if you're if you not there during the three days time frame. Right. But after that, the show exists. So they can sell it back like on other time, like, uh, oh, look at our catalog of online show. That's true. That's true. So they they can the sell point. it again after. Yeah, for cheaper and, like, for example, the main. Mm-hmm. If they're selling a show now, some people will just pay for the show, but the show is still record, so they can add it to a pillar, I think. Pillar, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. It is still on pillar. Um, so I don't know how long will, it will. Yeah, but people will join pillar that's true. Because they want to see. So it, it's a, maybe a marketing twist, but... Maybe. That's true. Good point. I mean, everything... You, I think nowadays, when it's your job, when, when that's your sole income, I think you don't have a choice. But to look at every possibility that it will give you income. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have to be creative, especially if you're, there's no show because you can't yeah. sell ticket and merch. So yeah. you have to sell well, something else. I think state champs, when they did their concert, they had exclusive merch that was available only for those 24 hours. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's big. Yeah, I think so. There was uh, there was special merch for that period. And the main, um, they, they come out with bundles. You could buy a ticket with, you know, exclusive things as well. 
So, so on the next podcast, you will have a new shirt. No. <laughs> so <laughs> this, I have only been wearing band merch. Um, that's, that's kind of the concept I'm trying to go for. Um, but I don't own a lot. Oh, and okay. be, just because I don't, I can't wear it at work. Right. <laughs> Even under your, uh, style? And so it's, it's, I don't know. It depends. It always depends what, right. There are some band shirts that I will wear to, that I used to wear to work. Now I just wear scrubs to work anyways. Okay. Um, so that just takes out everything. But before I guess there were some band shirts that were appropriate to wear under, under a blazer. Um, for those who don't know, I'm an optometrist, so I can't just wear band shirts and jeans to work. Um, <laughs> like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, I just, I just realized that sometimes I would buy a band shirt and I would never wear it. So I just uh, kind of stopped. Sad. I kind of stopped okay. buying I a understand. lot. I um, understand. Because then I would, I, I ended up wearing them as pajamas, and I found that a little bit sad too. Yeah, but you can keep it longer. It won't That's get true. destroyed or. <laughs> but the the main issue I have right now with um, buying merch is I used to be somebody who would buy merch at a show. Because living in Canada, you get $20 shipping fees that adds to your $20 t-shirt. And if you're not lucky, you have the... $20 customs. Customs. <laughs> so it's pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm all for um, supporting bands. And every time bands release merch, I'm like, oh, maybe I could buy something. And then I see the shipping fee. And then I give up. <laughs> because it's ridiculous to pay double just because of shipping. And I know it's nobody, it's not the band's fault. It's just how shipping works. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. So that's why I used to buy all my merch at shows. But And you, you help the band to eat for just to the next city. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um But I, I did buy a little bit of merch during quarantine, but I, I was just very, I tried to be very picky. And my friends and I have developed uh, the habit of asking each other if we wanted merch so that oh. we only buy, so that we only pay shipping once. <laughs> That's a good point, but you're probably handy and buying more. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> then you're like, oh, I would have paid 20 for shipping, so might as well buy an extra shirt. Yeah, just just in case. <laughs> well, no. So that I think about wraps up our subject for today. Yes. Um, and that was cool for our first one. Yeah, yeah, for our first official episode. So leave in the leave us in the comments if you looked at if you watched any uh, live streaming shows. If you didn't, why? Why not? Um, did you like them? And uh, we'll see you next time. This was... Yeah, and don't forget to go on our Instagram. I found some picture of my teenage year. Oh, that's going to be funny. So this was Sparkling Harmonies. We're your host, Lily. François. And you will hear us next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.